Now, would you want the gold for Bastrop? Is that what you were uh, hinting or alluding to? We don't have to. I just, it, that doesn't mean that anything's good with me, honestly. Yeah. I can't get this thing done. Is it okay if I push the pedals just to see where I'm at? Yeah, yeah. First thing we do, we get the weather. Airport automated weather observation two one one five zero wind calm visibility one zero sky condition clear temperature one niner two point minus zero two altimeter three zero two one three zero two one so I'm gonna take the barrel and move that to three zero two one and we'll do the same thing here when that moves up. Alright, so we got 300 feet. 300 feet, one, two, three times, right? Okay. The calm, but everybody seems to be taking off 36. Traffic Skyhawk 5415 Tango is left to base 36. So everybody's taking off. When it's calm, you can land either runway. Okay, so here's what I'm going to show you. All the information I need for Rustin is right here. The AWOS is 119.525. See, that's the frequency in Palm 2. See, I got two sets of radios. I can listen Three. on Palm 1 and 2, two. One. but only one. talk on Palm 1. Okay. okay, so the top frequency, that 1227, that is the CTAF. That's what everybody, all the pilots are talking on. 317 is the elevation above sea level. So the altitude that we're at is above sea level. It's not above the ground. Okay. okay. Everything is above sea level. All right. I'm going to power up a little bit. So I want you to touch the top of the brakes to, to chest test them. Wait till we get moving, all right? Hit them together. Hit them hard. Go ahead. There you go. See how you hit the left one or the right one first. Right. Try to do it together. All right. Boom. You want to stop. There you go. You're stopping straight. So my turn. Make sure they're good. You let off. All right. We're good. All right. Rustin traffic. Skyline November 80. Pop Echo taxi and run up area 36. Rustin. All right. So here's, here's where we're at. We're going to go to 36. So we're going to turn and go that way. All right, let me get us away from these planes. I'll let you taxi a little bit. All right. You got us leaned out for taxi because we don't need to. All right, you got your feet on the pedals? All right, play with it. Without using the brake, just you just play with the pedals. I got the feel for it. Line me up on these yellow lines and see if you can get me going straight there. Be on that yellow line right there. How it goes to the right or the left, huh? I want you to try to put the middle of the plane and we're gonna go to the right. All right, we're clear left and clear right. All right. All right, so kind of kind of lead it on. There you go, keep going, keep going a little harder. A little more, a little more. Kind of help you out a little bit. <laughs> you're fine, you're doing good. All right, now just get us on up there. Let's see what you look like. Oh, you look great. Always. Completely off. Yep. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to get over here. We got to do a quick run up. Rust and traffic. Skyline November 80, Papa Keiko, taking off 36, Rust. All right. Fuel on both trims Rustin, and trims. Traffic 8725 uniform, left down with 36. All right, heels on the floor. That's for me, not you. You're completely off. Yes. Instruments are green. Airspeed is coming alive. We're going to rotate about 60 knots and 60. And there she just pulls right on up. Positive rate, flaps are going to come up. Rustin traffic, Skyline, the river, 80, Papa Echo, departing the area to the north, Rustin. The 
if I take some pictures? No, you can do whatever you want to do, man. This is your day. It's normal little in front of us, isn't it? I think that's Darbone Lake. No. How often do y'all fly? Oh, uh, quite a bit. I mean, we try to fly as much as we can. Um, and obviously there's days we, you know, the weather's not good or whatever, I, you know, but we, we try to fly as much as we can. What's your farthest trip? Uh, Bahamas. Okay. Stop or did that be traffic small? Well, we, uh, really to do. Yep. we flew down here and stayed the night with her dad. And then from here we flew to uh, uh, Fort Pierce, Florida, which is down south on the Atlantic side. And we did that because Florida really gets a lot of pop-up weather in the afternoons, the storms. So what we did was is um, we uh, spent the night in Fort Pierce and got out the first thing in the morning. But, I mean, we could have got there in one day. We just wanted to stop if we wanted to. Bonneville Airport's about five miles up in front of us. Oh, okay. Y'all are uh, learning how to sail, too, right? Well, we both got our captain's licenses. That's awesome. Yeah, We, matter of fact, we've already been on a couple of sails. And this fall, we have a boat chartered. Uh, and more and more of the heating. Oh, wow. And, uh, That's course. awesome. Yeah. So, uh, it's moving on out now. Put your hands on the yoke. What's comfortable. Feet off the pedals for now. Right. Okay. So, what I want you to do is let's bank to the left. I want you to just kind of get a feel for it. I got us pretty much straight and level right here. See on the horizon about how far the horizon is? Okay. So if you do this, well, that's left, right? You can see that. Uh -huh. The same thing going to the right and see that. So that's just a nice shallow bank. You don't need anything. So kind of had us point us out that way a little bit toward the left. Doesn't take much, does it? No, it doesn't. See, we're going, you know, 100. 40 knots, so about 150 miles an hour. So if you think about it like this, if you're going 150 miles an hour in the car, are you going to jerk on the wheel? No. You're going to do a nice, controlled, easy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, so it's your airplane, you've got it. What I would suggest is relax. Matter of fact, you can probably just do one hand. Uh, reason being is if you get tense and you muscle up, you'll tend to like pull or push on the yoke. With, without even thinking about it. So point us off that away for right now. So you are flying. We're just along for the ride. <laughs> you just keep your hands close to those controls. Well, <laughs> oh, you're doing good. Matter of fact, you're holding, you know, nice and steady. I won't trim us just a touch. Now, the reason why we're feeling a little bumps See where the clouds are darker right here? Right. That's where some of that weather's at. And you see out there in the front of us, see the clouds, they kind of have little tails coming down? Right. That's what we call virga. So that's usually indicative of turbulence. Still going to the left correctly? You're doing good. There's bass trip out there, right? I, did you want buzz bass trip? Can. Do you want to? You're flying, I ain't doing nothing. There's the airport, airport from Astro right there. Well, I'm about probably three miles east of the airport. Okay. Let me know when you get there and you want to take a picture of your place or not. Okay. You can go ahead and start turning that way if you want. There you go. Nice and easy. So you got about a 10 degree bank. Huh? That's 10, that's 20, that's 30. It's a nice, smooth, easy bank. Uh, Astrup Airport is closed today, or we could buzz it, but uh, you can start kind of veering off that away. You see Bastrop's right there. Okay. Kind of see the lines coming down. Is that is that weather, or what is that? Well, that's the sun rays you're seeing. Okay. And I'm going to help you out just a touch. You see that line? So you follow that line, it'll take you straight to Bastrop. Cool. 
is what we call flying the magenta line. Okay. What I want you not to do is get fixated on that. Just kind of pick you out a spot, you know, a landmark somewhere, and just head straight to it. Okay. You're doing good. Thank you. Tell you what, my dad would have loved this. I, I wished your dad, man, I, you've heard me say this, and I'll say, say again, I really respected you. He, he was just an awesome man of God, number one. Number two, just, you know, his heart for people was just unsurpassed, you know. He, he made me a better man, that's all I can say. Well, I know he loves you, Captain Ron. I still, when he went to the Ukraine on that mission trip, I, you know, I gave him, uh, you may not know this, but I gave him some cash to say, here, go spend this and, you know, on yourself, have a good time. He spent it and bought me a hand-engraved chess set. <laughs> that know? sounds about right. And that's your dad, you know. He, he, even though I gave that to him, just, you know, maybe go out to eat dinner one day or do something just to kind of splurge. And uh, I still have that. I'll never get rid of that chest set. It's awesome. I think I, I gave up. I think it was maybe two Christmases ago. My brother, he had some of Dad's old shirts, some of his favorite shirts. Yeah. Some of them had the Open Door Missions logo on them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, there's some pillows made out of those shirts, and it had each of my girls a teddy bear made. Oh wow! The shirts. That, that's cool. It was it's pretty neat. I believe that's by Ubonity. Yeah, that's going to be by Ubonity. Now, when you turn and bank, you tend to lose a little lift on one wing. Usually, the lower wing loses a little lift. So, you might have to have a little back pressure. When I say little, I mean just, just hold it up and just hold a little tension on it on your turn. Now, all you got to do is look at the rise and know that. Yeah, I've been. I, I can tell. I can. So we're going down right now, right? Uh, just a little bit, but not much. How's my uh, okay, my banking? You're, you're at 20 degrees right now. Okay. Basically, do east from the airport. All right. So it should be this way. Here we go. We're yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the dirt. That's the dirt pit right there. Yeah. So I'm. That's. See that pond right there? Yeah. I'm directly. In, the, in those in that group of trees from the pond. I will right, well, take a picture. I'll I'll, I'll take over. That's neat. Yeah, there's a. Um... Anybody home? No, oh. no, they're at they're at uh, a cheer meeting this evening. Oh. Are both girls cheering? They are. One one's going to be in high school this year, and the other one in uh, eighth grade. Wow, that's just unreal. Crazy. Yeah. Are right, you ready to fly again? Sure. All right, your airplane. There's Marouge. They have ice cream in Marouge. Yeah, we used to ride our motorcycles up to Marouge to eat ice cream. Country cream. So, you have yeah. to do that uniform turning. Yeah, we're going to stay about 3,500 now. Okay. All right. Where, you anywhere else you want to go? Um, we could go over the girls' school. It's about 15 miles from the house, probably. Where is that at? Beekman. Huh? Beekman, which is um, north of uh, Bastrop. It's right, right north of, of Bussy Break. All right. We'll head us that way. Bayou Bartholomew. So we need to probably go straight now. Have like a football field or anything, or yeah, they've got a football field and a, a baseball and a softball field. Well, that should make it easy to spot. You never knew there was a huge plant just north of. <laughs> I did not. I don't. I don't. I really don't know what that is. I'll bank us a little bit here. Yeah, I was gonna say now if you bank, we should be able to. Girls will enjoy that. There you go. Do y'all ever fly into Monroe? Uh, we have once. Um, her dad likes us to fly uh, into Ruston. He just likes the people there. They always treat him good, always get him coffee and everything. Now, 
when you fly into an airport like Monroe, you don't actually go to the actual, the, the main uh, terminal. terminal. No, we go to what they call an FBO, a fixed base operation. And um, at uh, like Ruston, that's an FBO. Okay, so the fixed FBO at Monroe is just a little bit north of there. Okay. Hey Tim, what is all this flooded land over here? It might be the wildlife management area. Up there. A lot of people duck hunt in there. I was going to say, that looks like a duck hunting haven. Is Tim still flying? No, I'm flying now, Tim. Tim, just let go. If you won't fly, you can fly. I'm enjoying looking at the view at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of it, too. When you're flying, you're kind of nervous about what you're doing, and, you know, you kind of can't see the lights. We're almost back to Ruston anyway. I won't buzz her dad's house. All right, were you going to tell him he was doing a real good job? <laughs> Holding altitude? Bit. Well, I just couldn't tell, you know. <laughs> there was no difference between you and him. Oh. Well, here, Tim, you take over. You land. <laughs> That's either a really good thing for me or a really bad thing for you. I'm not sure which one. Well, here's what they say. Any landing you can walk away from is a good land. That's right. What a great landing is, yeah. if you can still use the airplane. <laughs> How long did it take for you to kind of get used to just all the all the ebbs and flows of flying? Well, it, it's kind of a process. You know, when you first get your pilot's license or certificate, some people get hung up on the terminology. Um, basically, you know, you're just flying real around a familiar area, right? And then you start trying to fly a little further, a little further. And basically, a long cross-country trip is just nothing but a bunch of short trips stitched together. Right? And then when you learn that and get comfortable with that, then you can, you know, start taking long. So I flew about a year, or you know, within a year after I got my pilot's license, I got my instrument rating. Right? And the next year, we flew from Kansas to the Bahamas. Obviously, I know flying instruments is a lot harder than flying visual. Yeah, fl instrument flying is basically the, the hardest thing you can do. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's, um, it's the hardest. The girl we were talking to, she's working on her instrument rating. Well, and, and she said, man, it is just really tough. And I said, oh, I know it, because what they do is they, they task saturate you. They're, they're making you do so much stuff just so quick that I could say, uh, Tim, what's your name, Tim? And you look at me with a blank face. Wow. You won't even know what your name is because you'll be so past saturated. We're almost there, aren't we? Yeah, we're real close. This has been great. I really appreciate you taking me up today. I left the house for work this morning. My wife looked at me, she said, Tim, I want you to remember one thing for today. I said, what's that? She said, you're not a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, but I'm going with a good one. So, well, I don't know about that, but you flew the plane for about an hour by yourself. Wow. It seemed like it was that long. Yeah. International Airport, automated weather observation. Two, two, one, six, zero. Wind, calm. Visibility, one, zero. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, one niner, dew point, minus, zero, one, altimeter, three, zero, two, zero. Oh, you see the airport? Yes. See it? Um, uh, yeah. See it straight in front of us there? This side of where that smoke is burning, you can see the hangars and stuff. That's why I say it's the easiest thing to look for is hangars, right? Rusted in traffic. Now, Lake November 8, General Pompeco is 6 to the east, going across midfield. They're left down 136, full stop, Rusted. Want to do a radio call? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do, too. I know. I've been trying. To, I've been trying to listen and, and make myself understand. Oh, you can you can listen all you want to, and you can know exactly what to say. But push that button, and you'll go. Uh, <laughs> Janice goes. I'm gonna do the call. She hit the button. She went. Uh, what do I say? <laughs> and it's like she knows what to say because she's heard me do it all. You know, forever. I. Yeah, we're gonna start slowing her down a bit. 
Rusted traffic, Skyline to Rumber Race, El Papeco is two and a half to the east, gonna cross midfield, enter left downwind, three six, full stop, Rustin. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're crossing midfield, there's a traffic pattern's on the other side. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna go left downwind, because this is upwind. That's where we took off was three six, right? Okay. And so, and then we're gonna go downwind base and then final. Traffic skyline to Ripper at Papa Echo is at midfield, entering left downwind, 36, south of Rustin. Actually, the wind sock is favoring an A. It's blowing down the runway. I'm going to go uh, Rustin traffic skyline to Papa Echo across midfield, wind sock favoring 1A, uh, so we're just going to cancel that. You want to land with the wind? Into the wind. To the wind, okay. Yeah. What it is, when we heard the, the, the weather... Seven. Zero. It said wind's calm. Okay. Western Regional Airport. Automated weather oh. observation. Two, two, two. two. If they're calm? Calm. Visibility, one, zero. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, one, niner. Dew point, minus, zip. Um, you know, uh, like the airport we fly at, if the winds are calm, they have a specific runway to land when the winds are calm. But when I flew over, I looked at the wind sock and it was favoring uh, 1A. Okay. I'm just going to land 1A. So what it is, is you can see that wind sock to the left of the runway. It was blowing this away. Okay. But the wind has been blowing the opposite way all day long. See those four white lights at the end of the runway? That gives us our glide slope. So four white means we're a little bit high. We want to see two red and two white. Just one got red just then, right? Right. One mile five. Rustin traffic. Skyline Angel Papico, short final one eight. Full stop, Rustin. Now they're two white, two red. All right, that means we're on a three degree glide slope coming in. Runway looks short now, don't it? It does. <laughs> How many feet is this runway? Uh, about 6,000. Wow. Power out, we're just floating, is all we're doing right now. That's the small horn. That's what you want to hear right before you touch down. Lips are coming up. Traffic spelling angel pop pickle clear one eight. That's the DFBO for us. That's all there is to it, bud. Awesome. Awesome. Good job. That was great. <laughs> After we got out of the plane, we noticed some people standing around with cameras ready, and we got to share the momentous occasion of Zach getting his solo in. And as every pilot knows, that when you solo, that is the day you become a pilot. And that's the day you will remember forever, even more so than when you get your check right and get your private pilot's license. It was great to meet Zach's family, and he too is now sporting a par for the course hat.